Hello everyone. In the previous chapter, we started creating the animation of an image carousel. We have seen that the images are displayed in the order of the list, and that according to their positions in our virtual space, it is necessary to duplicate some of them. In this second part, we are going to complicate things a bit, by modifying our carousel, so that it contains four different images. So let's open our program, and open the backup of our previous lesson. If you haven't done it, it will be practically impossible for you to continue further, and I invite you to do the previous lesson first, in order to be able to continue to evolve with this chapter. To avoid unpleasant surprises in the event of an error, because error is human, select your view, right click on it, and click on. Copy the view, now, right click in the space after your view, and click, paste view. You now have the same view twice, and we are going to work on the second one, thus keeping a backup of it, the first one. Open the editor, object and animation of our second view. In the title bar, at the very top of the window, you must have confirmation that it is indeed the second view which is in edit mode, and the information must appear. View 2 on 2. Since our animation is going to be a little bigger, and, in order to air out our carousel a bit, go to the tab, animation, and, for the three images, set their size to 50% for their two axes, at their first key. Since the size setting is not active for the last keys, it is therefore not necessary to modify them. Now it's time to start working a little. As said in the introduction, the elements are displayed according to the order of the list of elements. Let's do some logic. We have a carousel that is going to have four images, placed equidistant. Let's do a little diagram. We can represent the locations of the images, by the four corners of a square, the center of which would also be the center of our carousel. Let's place our four images at each corner, and number them from 1 to 4, clockwise, the first being the lower left corner. Now we need to define the order of visibility of the images, while taking into account that our carousel will make a complete turn, counterclockwise, and that all quarters turn, this list is going to be different. Let's start with the first quarter turn. First, we must have image 1, because, at the end of the quarter turn, it will also be in front of image 4. Second, image 4, which is, like image 1, in front of the last two. Third, image 2, because, like image 1, at the end of the quarter turn, it will be in front of the image 3. And finally, image 3. Which gives us the list, 1, 4, 2, 3. Let's go to the second quarter turn. On the same principle, we first have the lower left image, that is now image 2, followed by the lower right image, that is the image 1, then, the upper left image, that is image 3, and finally, the image of the upper right corner, that is image 4, which gives an order, 2, 1, 3, 4. Let's put this list next to that of the first quarter turn. Do the same for the third quarter turn, where we will get the list, 3, 2, 4, 1. And finally, the last quarter turn, with the result, 4, 3, 1, 2. So we have the positions that the images will have to use, to make a complete turn. Let's try to align these four lists, to use as few image copies as possible. After a lot of testing, which I will dispense with, we need a list of elements composed as follows. Images 1, 4, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 1. Now let us place four lists in this array, and we should have the following result. Thus, 
For each image is used, we have the periods of time during which they must be visible. For each column, correspond a quarter of the time of our view. We can therefore, for example, note that image 1 at the top of the list must be visible during the first quarter, then, that of the center, during the second and fourth quarters, and finally, the last, for the third quarter. Let's keep this table handy, because we're going to have to use it for all our images. Now we can actually start our animation. We already have our first and second image, which we will move to the main frame, so that they match our diagram. Image number 1 should be placed to the left and forward. For the moment, it is well on the left, but in the center. We must therefore move it towards us, over the width of the frame, that is, by minus 100% on the z-axis. Enter this value for the first key. She is now in her place. We will place the visibility times after we have added all our images. We are going to duplicate this image twice, using the commands copy the image, then, paste twice on the frame, and we must after that, have a list composed of, two once the first image, once the second, once the first, and finally, once the second. Using the command, Order, move backwards, move the second first image, so that it is at the end of the list. Now the second image. We will repeat its move for both copies. Select them in turns, and modify their displacement from right to left, that is from 100 to minus 100 on the x-axis, and, let's move them backwards, as for the first image, by the width of our frame, that is, plus 100 on the z-axis. This done for our two second images, we are going to add the third. Select one two two second image, then, make a copy of the image, paste on the frame. Now, in the tab, properties, deactivate the option, main image, then replace it with another one. Right check the option, main image, which now must be on. 3, and modify its name to, image 3. Go back to the tab, animation, and we have to move it to the right, that is, to 100 on the x-axis. Move it in the list of elements, so that it is in second position, between the first image 1, and the first image 2. Then, make a copy of it, which will be placed again at the top of the list, and, move it to the penultimate image, either after the second image 2, and before the last image 1. We are going to repeat this operation for the fourth image. Select the first image 1, copy and paste, then, in the properties tab, change the image, remembering to uncheck the option main image, then check it again, and change its name to image 4. Then, in the tab animation, modify its position so that it is on the right, that is, plus 100 on the x-axis, and, place its second in the list. Make a copy of it, which you will place in the penultimate position in the list, which, now, must correspond to our image list defined above. We can now define the visibility times for each of them. With the exception of the central image 1 and the first image 4, all the others can be defined exclusively with the command, interval, in the tab, properties. Either, in order, or and according to our diagram. For the first image 1, the first quarter time, or from 0 to 2001. Yes, remember that to avoid a cut effect, you have to add a millisecond at the end of the time, and subtract one from the start of the time. We will come back later to the first image 4, and the central image 1. For the first image 3, the third and fourth quarter times, that is from 3999 to 8000. For the first image 2. The first three quarter times, that is from 0 to 6001. For the second frame 2, the last quarter, 
that is from 5999 to 8000. For the second frame 3, the first and second quarter, that is from 0 to 4001. For the second image 4, the second and third quarter times, that is from 1999 to 6001. And for the last image 1, the third quarter, that is, from 3999 to 6001. We only have two images left to schedule, but their times are truncated, and therefore we have two possibilities. Either, we duplicate these images, to give them each one of the two quarter times, but, this implies increasing the number of images used. Or, we will play with the interval command, coupled with some visibility keys. It is this option which I chose because, it is the most sparing in memory, and in number of elements. So select the first frame 4, and, as it must be visible the first and last quarter, we must first, put the interval values from start to end, that is, at 0 and 8000. Then, let's add a first key more or less to a quarter of the view, then, in the tab, animation, using the last command position of the point of control, into the time, 2000, because, as for the interval command, this one is also expressed in milliseconds, then, activate the command, opacity, which must be at 100%. Right click on this control key, and, in the drop down menu, click on, duplicate the control key. This news is placed a bit later in the timeline. Change its position to 2010, because closer to the previous one, it could cause problems when changing the duration of the view, and, change its opacity to 0%. Duplicate this key again, then set it to 5990. Duplicate it one last time, set it to 6000, and, change its opacity to 100%. We only have image 1 left. We will proceed in the same way, except that, here, its visibility must be in the second and fourth quarters, and therefore, that we can therefore already delete the first using the command, interval, to which we will give the values, 1999 and 8000. Now let's add our keys. Let's add a first as time 4000, with the opacity at 100%. Then, by duplication, a second at time 4010, and whose opacity we will modify to 0%. Then a copy of it at time 5990. And finally, a last one at time 6000, with 100% visibility. Well, that was a bit long, but, if you play your animation, everything should be perfect. The images are clearly visible or hidden, depending on their position in the 3D space of our carousel. This principle, of using a diagram before your 3D creations, will be very useful to you, and will save you a lot of headaches, and scholarly calculations. Close your editing window, and make a backup copy of your project, because our carousel is not completely finished. Of course, you can use this animation as it is, or, as a basis for other ideas, but, we will need it, for the last part devoted to the creation of our carousel. Thank you for your attention, and see you soon for the rest of our tutorials dedicated to PTE. Katerina and Patrick.